Today we're talking about Mexico, and oddly enough, not in the Donald Trump angle that'll get us a ton of clicks. I guess I'm still just salty that they announced their agreements minutes after I posted my most recent video. Come on guys, it was 9 o'clock at night. I thought I was safe from breaking news for at least a few hours. Now instead we're talking about the least sexy aspect of Mexican politics, their bond market. See, the value of Mexican government debt is circling the drain right now. It's being reported that Mexican bonds are teetering on the edge of junk. At that point, the Mexican government's debt would no longer be investment quality, which would somehow make it even less likely that they're going to ever pay for a wall. So what the heck happened? I mean, it took Puerto Rico literally filing for bankruptcy to get them to this point. Well, this mainly stems from their state-owned oil company. Now that really plays into what you look at. You've already issued a warning on Pemex's outlook, uh, in part because we're dealing with so much debt. I mean, leave it to government management to find a way to lose money on an oil company. Almost as bad as having your Atlantic City casino go bankrupt. This means that the government is on the hook for $107 billion in debt. Because their oil company is the most in debt oil company in the world. You know, Mexico, if you rethink your position on Maduro, we could probably see your oil company being in the black sometime soon. Just saying. The big problem here is that something we don't experience in the United States is happening. When you issue a 10 year bond, at the end of the 10 years, the government has to pay the money and interest back to the person who owns the bond. When this happens in America, we generally just make and sell more bonds to pay for it, in a scheme that we probably borrowed from the great and well respected economist Charles Ponzi. What a schemer he was. The difference between America and Mexico in this case is that, well, when we make a bond, people want to buy it. If you're throwing out soon to be junk bonds to pay off existing debt, that's going to get expensive fast. In the short term, the biggest risk is uh, debt maturities. Uh, we have about 4.5 billion maturing uh, next year. Um, and then from then on to 2022, another close to $30 billion maturing in debt. So what's the solution? Well, enter Mexico's new president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, or AMLO. His solution is, well, surprising to put it lightly. First, Mexico has to keep their oil company solvent, so they're giving it a capital injection of $1.25 billion, which is honestly like bringing a super soaker to a forest fire. I mean, during the financial collapse, we'd give a Goldman banker twice that much for just stubbing his toe. Yeah, we lent out more than $700 billion there. The other proposal to deal with this debt problem is a... Really? Well, okay. $3.5 billion in tax breaks for the oil company. This might sound bad, but it means that Mexico's oil company will be able to take that money that they would have had to give to the government and instead use it to pay back some of their existing and coming debts. In response, the markets looked at these two-step plan and firmly said, well, the government doesn't grasp the severity of this crisis at all. And that led to more instability and bond interest rate rises. The problem is, where's the money going to come from for a more comprehensive bailout? Andres Manuel López Obrador became Mexico's president, the country's first leftist leader in decades. He got straight to the point. 30 years of free trade policies and growing privatization were out. Yeah, and that agenda is not coming cheap. To achieve these larger bailout goals, AMLO might have to break one of his previous promises not to take out additional debt. You see, he's actually bent on a budget surplus. Well, a pre-debt interest payment budget surplus. On the other hand, he could also fund his bailout by scrapping or deferring social projects or proposed refinery investment projects, which would not be a great look for the first leftist leader in decades. Basically, the question is how this state-owned oil company with bonds teetering on junk is going to pay the 44% of its $104 billion debt that's coming due in the next four years, as well as its pension liabilities of $66 billion. So we'll see what happens and hope that it doesn't drag Mexico's official bond into junk territory. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. 
Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.